Hello and welcome back to another video. Of course, I'm not starting this video off in the airport. I'm still here booking tickets. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you can purchase tickets at the convenience store in Japan. Uh, this is another option to purchase tickets if for some reason uh, your credit card isn't working or you don't even have a credit card and you want to purchase some tickets. Uh, this is the general method that I used to purchase uh, tickets here in Japan. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to uh, do this. Oh, by the way, um, this only works for domestic flights in the country, so you can't do this for anything international, just domestically. Okay, let's go buy some tickets. So I already went ahead and entered in all my details, and then when it comes to the page where you have to pay, obviously default is credit card, so we'll just click on convenience store. So we have options here of Lawson, uh, Mini Stop, or a Family Mart, and I usually go with Family Mart, so I'm going to click on that. Then we can go ahead, just click on purchase. Would you like to proceed? Yes, please. If you need, there's instructions over here. You can always click on those. And anyways, we're all done here. Let's go to the uh, convenience store. All right, so that's all there is to it. And when you pay, you just get a receipt or a piece of paper. So just make sure you hang on to that. Uh, that's how somewhere safe until you're ready to go. And, and you'll get a confirmation email uh, right after you pay as well. And that's all there is to it. Time to wait until flying day. Oh yeah, so uh, come along as you go from A to B. All right, so it's finally flying day today. So within the two, three weeks, I got a couple emails saying the aircraft switched. I wasn't planning on making this video today. I was planning on doing my return video because it was on a domestic uh, wide body aircraft. And Japan Airlines and ANA are well known for using uh, wide body aircraft for domestic routes. Something my country doesn't do just because we don't have the population, I guess. And uh, interestingly enough, they have two types of aircraft. So they have aircrafts configured for the international routes and aircrafts configured for the domestic routes. Now with the situation that we have and the lack of international flights, some of those international aircraft have been put into the domestic circuit, which is why I guess I'm on it today. The difference between the two aircraft generally is down to capacity with the domestic flights, domestic aircraft having a lot more seats. For example, from 1979 to 2006, uh, a and A had the 747 with, I think, over 500 seats. Um, had more seats than their current A380. Uh, most notable by, if you were to see a picture of it, it doesn't have the winglets. So the use of wide body aircraft in this country has been, you know, been around for a while and continues to this day, of course. So I guess what I wanted to do was to show you a and A's domestic wide body aircraft. However, what we're going to show you today is ANA's international wide body aircraft. And I have never flown ANA International, so this gives me a chance to check out their international wide body aircraft. I believe it's a Dreamliner today, unless it's switched again, and do it on its domestic flight. So that's, uh, that's what's up for today. Uh, we're going to jump to the airport. I covered Haneda extensively over and over again, so we'll skip the train, we'll skip the check in. So I'll meet you guys at the gate after security. I'll see you then. All right, so I just got to the gate and it is indeed a Dreamliner. It's kind of hard to get a good picture of the plane because there's like uh, double walls of glass with the, the, the paneling. So it's, it's a little difficult to catch a picture of the plane, but uh, it's a Dreamliner. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but we're off to Osaka Itami Airport. Uh, a couple episodes ago, I went to Kansai. So this time we'll check out Itami Airport. Uh, it's about 45 minutes before the flight leaves, so I'm just going to go relax, fill up my water bottle, and uh, we'll jump on the plane uh, soon enough. Boarding was quick with only a moment's pause to catch a glimpse of the plane. Seat 22A provided a great view of the wing this evening. And as we push back and taxi, let's bring in Sasquatch for this episode's Scouting Report. Hey, thanks for that. Sasquatch Gaming here. The ANA has 75 Dreamliners in total with 36 
being this dash eight variant. There are three seating configurations for the 787-8. This particular aircraft has 240 seats over three rows in two classes, featuring a large bar in the center of the business class. <laughs> Sorry, hit the bar. a a also has a 184 and a 169 seating configuration, which also includes a premium economy class. The different seating configuration were originally employed for either long haul or regional international flights. And of course, if you want to enjoy those views, make sure you avoid seats 23A and 23K. In addition, the aircraft has seven lavatories with six being fully functional lavatories. I'm gonna go use one. See you guys later. And that about does it for the scouting report. Again, many thanks to Sasquatch for helping me out. Now let's get above the clouds. Our brief evening flight would take us over the island towards Itami Airport, which is located in the north end of Osaka. The economy cabin with its 333 seating layout was right full for tonight's flight, which is a good sign. However, it's also partly due to a handful of flights still being cancelled daily between the two cities. The seat itself was actually pretty comfortable and included an adjustable headrest along with a seat pitch of 31 inches, which provided enough comfort and space for a backpack underneath the seat. And above, you have your light and air vent. Seatback houses the 9-inch monitor, its remote, a coat hook, the foldable tray table, and seatback pockets. We'll take a peek at the IFE system in more details in a few moments, and I always enjoy seeing these seatback tables which fold in economy. They give you that bit extra space without worrying about spilling anything. ANA's 787s are Wi-Fi enabled and is complimentary on domestic routes. However, I didn't bother using it on this short jump. As always, the crew did an outstanding job on the service. As this flight was in February, this was a hot coffee, something I wouldn't dream about in July. Back to the in-flight entertainment. It was quick and responsive. It appeared to have a wide variety of shows, movies, and films, and content geared towards the international flight. Furthermore, you're also able to connect your own device, which supports images, PDFs, and MP3s though I feel this feature may have been more useful in the past. If you know the purpose of this connection port, let us know in the comments. And what did I use the in-flight entertainment for? To watch a show on unique Japanese vending machines, of course. If you find yourself flying to Osaka Itami, choose a seat on the left side of the plane. If the weather's nice, you may be treated to nice views of Osaka as you land. This economy seat cost me 10,750 yen, which works out to 78% of a Shinkansen ticket. And that was the international aircraft views on a domestic flight experience. And overall, you know, the aircraft is fantastic. I would have no problem being on that aircraft for 8 or 10 hours uh, across the ocean or to, to some other destination. And I really uh, forgot how quiet the Dreamliner actually was. It was over a year since I was on my last one. So uh, it was a good way to bring back some memories and it was a great flight. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you thought and I'll see you guys around next time.